Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this beautiful day that the Lord has made? I'm Karen Jane Casey on the podcast, Turn to God with Karen. And it's on this podcast that we talk about the, and have encouragement through our sufferings and our challenges. We learn from experience and we always know that we can turn to God about anything. And please know during this 10 to 15 minute episode, I'm not going to be judging, lecturing down, or preaching at you. Rather, I'm sharing what I'm learning along my journey, and I'm not finished yet. And we learn together, and I encourage you to share what you've learned. We're continuing what we started at the beginning of the year, and the word is focus. Focus on the Lord and our life in Jesus Christ, and not on the distractions of this world. And in that, it's important to walk in love while we're remaining focused, knowing the greatest commandment, which is essentially to love our creator, the one who has unfailing love towards us, to love our neighbors, those in need, and ourselves in a loving, in a healthy, balanced way. And then Jesus wants us to also love our enemies. In March, we built upon focus and love of the Lord to look at issues, problems that typically trip us up along our journey. When we covered several, such as facing the unknown, are we going to be faithful or fearful? To have free will and making decisions and being quick to listen and slow to speak. In April, our entire series was about Christ crucified and he arose, and we answered several questions in that. During the month of May, we explored the lives of several biblical women to see what we can learn from them. And especially, it was the Samaritan woman at the well. She let her light shine in witness to others. The decision of Queen Esther for such a time as this, she did step forward for herself and for her people, even though it was dangerous. Worship and service, choices that Martha and Mary made. Sometimes we can be so busy in service that we forget the better thing. The brave actions of Judge Deborah and Jael, the tent maker, how they were so brave. And it's also a cautionary tale relating to Rachel and Leah. Rachel and Leah, we, they were always jealous of each other and comparing each other. If you haven't heard or seen some of these podcasts, I encourage you to go back now at Karen Jane Casey on YouTube or uh, audio on buzzsprout.com. For the month of June, we study the biblical men and what we can learn from them. Last week, we looked at Joseph in the episode, Can You Remain Future Focused? And Joseph um, had a dream that the Lord had given him early in life, but he had to be patient and full of faith, knowing that good things were coming while he was betrayed by his brothers, thrown into slavery, and he was falsely imprisoned. Through it all, the Lord was with him wherever he was. Even while he was in prison, the Lord gave him favor. And ultimately, the Lord always has a good plan for our lives. What the enemy intends to harm us, God is in control and he is good. Today's episode is about David, King David, a man after God's own heart. The episode title is, Can You Bring It All to the Lord? Do you wonder why David was a man after God's own heart. Aside from that, I've seen many lessons about David. For instance, how long it was from the time he was anointed to be king by Samuel the prophet, while he was only a shepherd boy, until the time he did actually become appointed king. That was a long time, but he had patient faith through it all. That dream was alive in him. How forgiving our God is when we look at King David's uh, terrible blunder when he did not go to, out to battle where he should have. And he saw Bathsheba, Bathsheba and he had an adulterous affair with her. Then she became pregnant and he tried to hide it. But her husband Uriah was too faithful to the men to be swayed. And then King David arranged for him to be dead. David uh, was approached by the prophet Nathan and his sin was exposed. What did he do? He repented. He asked God for forgiveness and he was forgiven. But there were some consequences that remained. 
Do you know that much of the book of Psalms is attributed to David? We can learn much about his relationship with the Lord and his conversations with the Lord. And I believe that is giving us a peek into how it was that David became a man after God's own heart. While reading the Psalms of David's, we will often find out how he cried out to the Lord and he sang songs of praise and he said intense prayers. It was a whole gambit of emotions, but always, always he counted on the Lord and he spoke with the Lord. With He shared with him everything. I believe that's the key to developing a close relationship with our creator. He knows everything about us already. He knows our very thoughts. Nothing is a surprise to him. What David did in Psalms, we can do also. He shared with him his every thought, good or bad. He shared his every emotion, even while he felt weak and was afraid in spirit. He admitted his shortcomings, especially his sins. And he was always ultimately believing and trusting in the Lord. And he did have a healthy, reverential awe and fear of the Lord. The Lord was there for him for rescue, forgiveness, and redemption. David was in constant and consistent prayer or conversations with the Lord about everything. And in that, he always loved God and he knew him as the king of the universe, the God Almighty. He had reverential fear at all times. I show To show you more clearly what I'm talking about, I'm going to randomly read a few passages in Psalms of David so you can get the point. We too can come to the Lord about anything and he wants us to do that. Okay, Psalms. How about Psalms 3, verse 1? Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? And then in the same in the same verses, verse 6, 7, and 8, he says, I will not fear though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessings be on your people. Psalm 5. Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my lament. Hear my cry for help. My King, my God, for you, for to you I pray. And then he speaks of his enemies. And in the end of that, he says, Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. So, let's see. How about Psalm 13? How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemies triumph over me? But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Psalm 14. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are, cor they are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. But they, there they are, overwhelmed with dread, for God is present in the company of the righteous. You evildoer, evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor. Psalm 18, and this is when he sang to the Lord the words of this song, with the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. King Saul was jealous of David and sought out to kill him. And this is what he says. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I have been saved from my enemies. In my distress, I call to the Lord. I cry to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears, so he knew the Lord was listening. And then in verse 30, As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. Are you getting a picture here? And then Psalm 22, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then at the end of that, 
portion on 27 and 28, all the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations will bow down before him for dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. Then, you know, Psalm 23, everyone knows that the Lord is my shepherd. So I won't, I won't read that. You know that. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And then in verse 10, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. 13, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Now we can learn so much from King David. Psalm 32, uh, verse 5, Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. I could go on and on, and I, I would love to do that. Um, and my, my very favorite is Psalm 37. I highly recommend you go to that. It seems to address every situation you could go through. But do you see how you can have conversation with God? Go to him about everything and anything. I hope that you will go through Psalms and check those out. Um, King David, King David, was sharing every facet of his life with the Lord, always with reverential fear in all of him, always depending upon him. And he even cried out to him sometimes, how long will I have to wait? Um, have you forsaken me? But in the end of the same passage, he praises the Lord, knowing that the Lord is there for him. David was not a perfect man, but when he sinned, he sincerely went to the Lord with, it, with a contrite heart, and he repented. Always he loved God. I believe the book of Psalm reveals so much about their very close and loving relationship. Can we emulate David? Can we be like him and cry out to the Lord, sing praises, repent of our sins when we've sinned, and cry out to him when we're upset, when we wonder how long it's going to be, always letting him know that we rely on him and we know that he is good. Pray earnestly, always giving him the honor and respect that he deserves. In all of this, we too can develop a close relationship with the Lord, and be a man or a woman after God's own heart. Did you like hearing the readings of Psalms? That I, just a little portion I gave you. When you go to my Wednesday episode, Sword of the Spirit, also under the podcast of Turn to God with Karen, we are currently reading through Psalms. And I mean, we literally read some passages each Wednesday. So I would like to invite you to come and listen to that. Well, there was a time in my life when I was desperately lost, hurting, and afraid. And I suffered from child abuse, from domestic violence, and from uh, the abuse of toxic people. I grieved over loss of loved ones. I had major back surgery. Can anyone resonate with any of these circumstances that I speak on? But God worked miracles in my life. He rescued, he delivered me time after time even though I never deserved it. So now I can say, I came to Jesus and I am never alone. He is always with me. He, I am healed. He replaced the brokenness that was in me and, and replaced it with joy in my heart. And I don't live in fear anymore. I have faith and I know that the Lord is always with me. I have an awesome future. And this is what I want for every person. And so I share the good news. I share the news, good news of Jesus. The most awesome thing that you can do for yourself is decide to come to Jesus and to rededicate your life to him. God's amazing love for us is evident when he demonstrated that by sacrificing his only son for our sakes. John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then Jesus said himself in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. 
Time and time again in the, in the Gospels, we find that confession is so important. Confession with the mouth out loud. Confess our sins. Confess the Lord. So I encourage you right now, regardless of where you stand today in your relationship with the Lord, I encourage you to pray this prayer with me and say it out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son. And I believe that Jesus came to earth and suffered on the cross, even for me. And he died. He arose again in three days. He defeated death. But I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. I repent of all those sins. I walk away from them now. But Lord, I need your help because I will be tempted. I need you, Jesus. I am nothing without you. And so I ask you now, come into my heart. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I am so thankful, Lord. I will serve you all of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said this prayer with me, you have just began, begun your relationship with Jesus. And I encourage you, read the word of God, study it, pray, pray continually, have conversations with the Lord as we talked about today, and learn about the character of Jesus. Learn the promises that you have for you. And always praise, always obey with gratitude for everything, and you will grow in your faith. I encourage, make Jesus the anointed one, your focus in life and in your ministry. Know that his unfailing love is forever, and you will find peace, peace and joy in your heart, regardless of the chaos all around you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, thank you again for joining me in this episode of Turn to God with Karen. This is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, podcaster, domestic violence, victim advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And also we have on Wednesday, Sword of the Spirit, and on Fridays, Karen's Book Corner, where we I share a little bit about the books I've written and read some of it. I invite you to share with me your comments, your any suggestions, any feedback is always welcome. You can go to my website contact page, KarenJaneCasey.com. When you go there at my website, you'll see information about the books, the blogs, the podcast, and even some reference material regarding domestic violence. Well, thank you and God bless.